Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. Uh, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, have an opportunity at any point in time during this broadcast to call in to the radio station with Bible questions, comments, and we will address those questions, listen to your comments live over the air during this half hour. Let me say on the onslaught as we go through the discussion that the Church of Christ that Christ said that he was going to build is not a denomination. A denomination is a terminology that simply means a part of the real. See, the church of Christ is the real deal. The church that Jesus said he was going to build is real. There was only one, and we're going to establish that, one people, one kingdom, one church, that Jesus, in fact, said he was going to build, and that is the church of Christ. Anything other than and outside of the church of Christ is a denomination, whether they call themselves one or not. Now, the number of the call is 281-837-2222. We have a call on the line, and we want to go ahead and address the caller's question at this time. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Be with you. Yes, sir. Uh, in the book of Genesis, when God made the heaven and earth, and he and he uh, decided to make uh, Adam in his image. And when he made Adam, he, later on he decided that he needed a helpmate, and he made Eve. Now to that union, Cain and Abel were born. And we all know that Cain killed Abel, and he, and, and when God found out about it and asked him about his brother, he made it, in other words, he made him a Bible born, and he had to wonder and Cain wandered into the land of Nod, where, that, where he say he knew his wife. Now, was there other people living at that time? That's a good question. Thank you, caller. Uh, the scriptures mentioned in uh, the uh, fourth chapter of Genesis, which is what our caller is saying, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare again his brother Abel. And Abel was a sh keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now by the two mentioning of these two individuals, let us remember something. The scriptures did not say that this is the very first child that she ever had. The scriptures does not say that this is the only child that she had or these two children. It just mentions these two. The Bible never tells us the name of Jesus' sisters, but he had at least two because the scriptures say we know his brethren, his brother mentioned his brother's name, and his sisters with an S. It never says those names. Because the Bible doesn't tell us the names of those people doesn't mean that he didn't have two sisters. Because it doesn't tell us the name of any of the other children that they bear, it doesn't mean they had any other children. Now we know that Adam and Eve were created by God and they were both created grown, as our caller said. But it does not tell us about all the children they had. And so therefore an individual has to understand is that they had all the different children, including the child that uh, Cain married. Here's the difference. God had it to where an individual has no choice but to marry his brother and sister even today because Adam and Eve are the first two parents. So you did marry your sister when you got married. You didn't marry the one from the same womb. And so at this point, there is no choice but to marry the one from the same womb at that time. And you know of it because the parents are still living. So there's no flaw in that. There's no creation before Adam and Eve. There's no uh, grown people created out of, after Adam and Eve because all the children come from them being husband and wife together and bearing children. So that is a doctrine taught by some denominations and false teachers that there was uh, others on the earth and God has another group of people. They was working with. That's not scripture. The true, and since the scriptures don't say that, the only conclusion you can come to is that they had other children. Is our caller still on the line? No. no. Oh, he's on there. Okay, God, uh, we hope our caller was listening and could understand that. If you disagree with that, call 281 837 2222. All we need you to do is bring scriptures to prove that. Remember, prove all things. First Thessalonians 521. 
Hold fast to that which is good. Amen. That's good teaching. Again, the number of the call is 281-837-2222. All right, now, you should be in Matthew, the 16th chapter, and I'm going to read into your hearing verses 13 through 18. Appreciate the caller's question. If any Amen. church would do, why you are not? In the Bible, Matthew 16 and verse 13, the Bible says, When Jesus came in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Now verse 18. And I say unto thee, talking to Peter, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build, get this, my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail, notice this word now, against it. Singular possession. In other words, Christ says, I'm going to build, how many churches, radio listeners? One church. Amen. He's going to build one people. He has one kingdom. And that's the only kingdom that he has. And he goes on to tell Peter, and I will give unto thee, verse 19 of Matthew 16, unto thee, talking to Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Jesus has made the statement based upon the confession. Now notice this. The church is not going to be built upon Peter. Peter is not the head of the church. Amen. That is not what Jesus is saying. Based upon the statement, Peter, that you made that I am the Christ, he says, I am going to build my church. Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. He is, in fact, the head of the church. Amen. See, this foolishness that we're seeing in Catholicism, this conclave of getting together and trying to decide on who's a pope and those of you who are in Catholicism uh, making these false accusations that Peter is the first pope that is found nowhere in the Bible. Peter never claimed to be a pope Catholicism is a false religion. It is not the church of Christ. They are not the people of Christ. They have their own doctrine and they have their own teachings. And Catholicism forbids to marry. Not only that, in Catholicism with this foolishness, with this Pope stuff, they bow down to this man who came from a womb just like you and I came from a womb. He got into the world just like you and I came into the world because of an activity that took place between a man and a woman nine months prior. He is not sinless himself. Peter never claimed to be sinless. Peter understood he was a man, and Peter understood that he was not to be worshipped. In Acts chapter 10, we have Peter going into the house of a man by the name of Cornelius, refusing to be bowed down to and worship, realizing and understanding that he was a man just like Cornelius was a man. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 25, the Bible reads, As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. You got a problem in Catholicism, my friend. Why are you people bowing down to this man, calling him the most holy father, when Jesus explicitly tells us in Matthew 23, call no man your father upon earth. You're calling him your father, and you are worshiping this man. My friend, you better wake up. And you're getting this information because we're trying to rescue your soul from a devil's hell. You're on your way to hell in a handbasket by eating this false doctrine, taking it in, and applying it to your life. You are going to go to hell, my friend, unless you come out of this false religion. Amen. Catholicism is a false religion. This conclave food waiting on the white smoke to choose who the pope is. And then you got this man on, uh, who was the former pope who claimed that in the, the decision being made to him to be a pope, it was not the Holy Spirit that decided. So that's why he steps down. But now those clowns that's in this Roman Catholicism, in Rome, in this room, they are claiming they're waiting on the Holy Spirit to determine who's going to be the next pope. I've even heard a lady say on television just recently, <coughs> It's so sad. It's what she says. Right now, we don't have a father. <laughs> that was her statement. It's sad right now, we don't have a father to lead us. Well, I want to know what happened to God and what happened to Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. The number of the call is 281-837-2222. We have a call on the line. We want to address the caller's question. Go ahead, call you on the air. Hey, bro. What y'all doing? I, I just wanted to commend y'all on what y'all are doing down there. And I just wanted to uh, piggyback on what you're saying about the Pope. If 
Peter was the first pope, then why did uh, Paul rebuke him in Galatians chapter 2? Amen. Uh, at verse 11. Amen. Can you that for me real quick? Uh, you said, can we can we read or elaborate on it? Is that what you said? Yes. Are you still there? Oh, he said, can we? I couldn't understand. He said, yes. read it. Make okay, yeah, you're exactly it. right. In Galatians chapter 2, uh, uh, Paul had to rebuke Peter because he was being hypocritical. In other words, Peter wasn't above reproach. Peter never claimed to be. What, what, what I'm trying to refute, radio listeners, is people lying on the Christian Peter. And we, I want to stop the, all the lies on Peter. See, well, I'm not going to let you lie on a brother in Christ who's, who's gone on. You're lying on a member of the body of Christ. Peter never claimed to be a pope. And I'm going to stop all you false doctrine teachers from lying on a man of God. A Christian who's in the body of the Lord who never claimed to be something that you're trying to make him be and develop your own doctrine and religion behind it. In Galatians chapter 2, which the, uh, the caller is alluding to, is found, Galatians chapter 2, Paul actually has to rebuke him. But when Peter was come into Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. So he wasn't above reproach. Paul understand that Peter is, is acting hypocritical right now in a certain situation. He, he, was, he, was, he was assembled with the Gentile, but when he saw the Jews coming, he dissimulated himself from them. And not only did he get caught up in it, he, he caused Barnabas to start doing the same. Barnabas actually, actually <laughs> followed behind him. And so the point we're making is Catholicism is a false religion. Amen. Catholicism even claims, and I don't know where they get... See, let me tell you, this is what we're saying. The Bible has to be your final authority. Amen. The Bible has to be your final authority. In Catholicism, do you know that they still believe that, that Mary uh, died a virgin? Isn't that ridiculous? Yes. That Mary died a virgin. And, and Brother Hosea has already alluded to, Mary had children. They had, and Joseph had children. I'm going to show you the scripture. And you need to call in to 818-37-2222. To, to, here's what the Bible said. Matthew 13 and 55. The Bible says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and his sisters. We don't know what Jesus' sister's name was, but Jesus had sisters. As Brother Hosanna stated in the first caller's question. Just like we don't know other children that, we, uh, that Adam and Eve had, they had other children. And Jesus and Mary had other children. And he even had sisters that whom we don't know the name. We don't know the girl's name, but they had girls. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? So Mary, they call her the Virgin Mary, she did not even die a virgin. She had children, radio listeners. Again, to prove the point that Catholicism is a false religion. Amen. Stop losing your mind over this foolishness you're seeing on CNN and ABC, waiting on some white smoke to come to choose a father. If you obey the Bible and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will know there is a heavenly Father whom we all should serve and whom we should all obey. Amen. Number of the call, 281-837-2222. We have another caller on the line. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, I was trying to find out, is it true about them Catholic guys sleeping with little boys? Is it true? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, all we're basing it on is what the uh, all we can say is what we see from the reports on on is television. The reason why he stepped down because he was sleeping with little boys. Oh, I, I I can't say I don't know the answer to that, sir. And and that's really not the argument that we're trying to make uh, at this time. I mean, that very well could be. I don't know that. But what we're trying to to discredit is Catholicism is a false religion. It's a man-made religion. See him stepping down, stepping down from what he's stepping down from something that the Bible don't even authorize him to step up to. Amen. He said there's no such thing as a pope, and that's what we're trying to get people to see. And so, a man without the Holy Spirit, there's all kind of sin in his heart. I mean, I'm sure a pedophiles is not the only thing that you see in in, in that in, in their lives that's wrong. And so, we're not here to argue, you know, why he's stepping down. We're, I'm arguing why is he even calling himself a pope? Amen. Why is he even allowing himself to be bound? Why is the world losing their mind over this Catholicism religion, which is found nowhere in the Bible? You know, the word Catholic is not even in the Bible. Amen. And you got if you're calling yourself a Catholic, a Baptist. A Methodist, a Presbyterian, those names are found nowhere in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So where did they come from? They are man-made. And that's the point we're trying to make. Number of the call is 281-837-2222. We have two callers on the line. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Uh, I'm the field, sir. The question I was having uh, was in reference to Peter, as you have stated. Uh -huh. When uh, Peter had denied Christ three times, 
Is is that why uh, Christ had asked him that question three times? Would he tend to his sheep? I mean, you said, is that why he asked? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, did, did it have something to do? You know, pertaining to like the Trinity three times. You know, well, I wouldn't try. To, we're not going to try to make a reference to the Trinity. You know. Ask them about um, you know tending his sheep. Well, well, the Bible doesn't tell us that, and so and we don't. We, we, we speak where the Bible speak and silent where the Bible is silent, and so the Bible doesn't tell us. Well, the reason Jesus is asking him three times, uh, uh, Peter, do you love me? Is because he denied him three times. We can't. The Bible doesn't say that he did that, and so uh, the, the the argument there is a is a mute argument. Uh, we don't know why, and hence we can't. We're not. We don't speculate on the reason why. We know that Jesus did ask him three times. And uh, we know Peter denied him three times, and that's as far as we can go. That's as far as we can go with that. Anything else would be uh, something that you just speculated on or that you read into the scriptures. But the Bible doesn't explain or tell us why. Number of the call is 281-837-2222. Uh, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Um, I'm a member of the Lord's Church, and uh, first of all, I just want to commend you, brothers, for... The, the, the fine job y'all doing in, in preaching God's word, but I would just like to add to to um, the scripture in there. You just read Matthew uh, thirteen or Matthew sixteen, thirteen through eighteen. But if you go over to Matthew uh, seventeen, that supports what Jesus told Peter, because Peter had wanted to build their tabernacle, go uh, to transfiguration, but it was God who told him. Not to do that. Amen. Amen. And, and, and in fact, that, that and that tells us that, he, that God didn't want us men to build anything after His will of fun. Amen. So I just wanted to say that well, we can listen to this, and that's good teaching, uh, my brother. We appreciate the call, and that's absolutely Amen. right. Uh, those of you who study the Bible, you simply go to Matthew 17, where Jesus went up to the mountain. He was transfigured. And uh, Peter saw Elijah and Moses, and Elijah and Moses was there. Uh, they were talking to Jesus about the way he should die, the resurrection, his death. And uh, Peter thought it'd be wise uh, to build three tabernacles, one for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. And God would disapprove of that and told him, this is my beloved son. He said, he told him, you're not going to build three. He says, uh, this is my beloved son. He says, hear ye uh, him, okay? Hear ye him. I want to make sure I don't misquote that scripture. Acts chapter 17, uh, and I want to give the verse, uh, yeah, verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him, behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, now this is what God said to, to Peter, uh, James, and John who was there. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. There's only one tabernacle, one church, one people that God expects us to listen to, and that is Christ. Stop listening to this foolish man called Pope. Uh, uh, these people in, you, in these Baptist churches called Reverend, these are, and we're going to deal with those too. Those are denominations. Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Methodist, Presbyterian, and the list is endless of all the different denominations that are in the world. There's only one body, one people, that Christ, one church, that Christ is going to say, and he is the head of the church, not Peter. Christ is the head. Don't have two heads over the body. One head over the body, and the head of the church is Christ. Mm -hmm. Number to call, 281-837-2222. We have two callers on the line. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Amen. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Go to the next. Go to the next caller. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. Acts chapter 5. Uh, Peter says, Why has Satan filled thy heart? To lie to the Holy Spirit, Peter could see he was lying. Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. While it remained anyway, Ananias, upon hearing these words, he kept back the money, and Peter killed him. A little while later... Hey, let's stop. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, sir. You're moving fast, sir. Blind man, you're moving fast. Blind man, you're moving fast. Hey, turn him down. Turn him down. He's lied on the Lord again. Okay, now, now, now blind man has called in again and made statements that's not true. Now listen what he said, Radio Lee. He said that Peter killed Ananias and Sapphira. Now, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 5, and we're going to discredit with the Bible, not our opinion, because our opinion means nothing. We're going to discredit foolishness with the Word of God. See, that's what we fight with, the sword of the Spirit. Talk about putting on the full armor of God. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Now let's learn to Acts chapter 5. See, he likes to fast talk and not read. He likes to give his opinions and his beliefs without reading the Bible. 
Acts 5, beginning at verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, kept back part of the price, and his wife also being privy to it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And afterwards so, was it not in your own power? What, why have you conceived this thing in your heart that you have lied unto men, not unto men. Now notice that. You've lied not unto men, but unto God. Peter's not calling himself God. Now let's keep reading. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was also about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell straight downward at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, found her dead, and carrying her forth, and buried her by her husband. And great fear came on all the church and upon many as heard these things. Now, where does the Bible say Peter killed her? The Bible does not say that Peter ended up killing Ananias and Sapphira. And point in fact, uh, his doctrine there, the doctrine there, I'm going to let you read that just a minute, brother. The doctrine there and the statement that blind man is making, it still doesn't even prove, even if Peter had somehow slayed him, it doesn't prove that he was the first pope. And how does that prove that Peter was the pope of the church? How does that describe and, and say that Peter was the head of the church, even if he had killed Ananias and Sapphira, which he didn't? Number of the call is 281-83-722-22. I'm going to let Brother Javier toss it to him so he can elaborate a little bit more on our, our subject. Brother Javier? Yes, in uh, Numbers chapter 16, verse 20, it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to, and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall man sin and will, will thou be wroth with all congregation? Now, angry, God was angry with Korah and his group because they were going against the laws of Moses. And in, in that same day, uh, what God did was open up the earth, and he swallowed them up with all the, that with all that appurtenant unto them, and they, they went down quick into the pit. On the morrow, you know, verse 41, it says that the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and, and against Aaron, saying, Ye have killed the people of the Lord. But it was really God who opened up the, the earth and, and destroyed uh, Kor and his group. Amen. And the thing that blind man is saying is that, is that Peter killed, Peter killed uh, Ananias. Ananias. But, you know, it, was, it wasn't Peter that had the... the Peter has no control over the Holy Spirit. It's, it's Christ's Spirit that that did that. Actually. Amen. You know, even as in, in number sixteen, when when uh, the earth opened up, it was God that opened them up, and they were accusing Moses of killing the people of the Lord when it was really God that had the power to open them up. Amen. You know, even when Moses uh, parted the Red Sea, it was the power of God that parted the Red Good Sea. Good teaching, son. Amen. Moses had Moses in himself didn't have the power to. To just separate the Red Sea on his own, it was the power of God that he that he get that That's he right. that he did it with, and also with the death of Ananias, it was Peter didn't do it from his own power because God doesn't give him that type of power. It was God's spirit that agreed he's going to die on his day. Now Amen. going back to what what Henry was saying in Revelation chapter 19 uh, concerning praying to men, you can't even pray to angels in Revelation 19:9. It says, "And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb." And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now this revelation as the angel is speaking to John. And uh, verse 10 it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So we can see right here that you can't worship men. You can't worship Paul, Peter. Good you teacher. can't worship not even an angel, which is even more more powerful than than any man on earth especially this position called pope uh which is established by men which you cannot see in the holy scriptures now amen concerning the catholic faith it started from uh when there's a certain king that desired to cease from killing christians after he uh after he desired to make a rule in rome to stop killing christians the some of the christians uh desired to cohabitate and and come together with the roman government and it, this established uh, positions such as Pope, Cardinals, Archbishops, which are positions that are not written in the New Testament scriptures. Amen. And uh, 
And I know in the, at this time, you know, there's a leader uh, in the world, a king, uh, called uh, that died, uh, Hugo Chavez, you know, Frias, which uh, they're doing a seven-day remembrance for uh, his death. And there's a lot of it's heavy at this time with the Catholic faith in that area. And a lot of a lot of them are praying for, uh, you know, for him to make it to heaven, you know, out of purgatory. But even the word purgatory is not is not written in the New Testament. Amen. For once one dies, you can't. You can't uh, pray them out of hell. You know? That's good teaching. Uh, and the thing is, purgatory is a word that's not even written in the New Testament scriptures. Because mm -hmm. Christ said, "If you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come." Amen. So if if this man Hugo Chavez, even though you have the president of Iran, uh, president of Brazil, all different types of kings and, and presidents of the world going to visit him, that Christ is not accepting something that that um that is not in the New Testament scriptures. Mm -hmm. Even though they pray and pray for seven days as long as they want to, they only the gospelers were saved and he and the Bible says if you die in your sins, where am you cannot come. That's so the teacher. thing is that, that that's that's not scriptural. You know, that's that's a big lie that's being populate that's being uh spoken of, shared Amen. with. The the parents are sharing with their children and the ch children are gonna grow up if they if they continue the same uh, doctrine to share with, with everybody else. And what that is 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 simply spreading a lie Amen. more and more, right. more, you know, spreading damnation more and more, and it doesn't bring salvation. Good it teaching. only brings confusion, and 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 you stay in a position of of de a delusion because you 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 think something is true when it's really a lie. That's why we're we're telling you these things with scripture so you may you may prove with scripture, and uh, if you have a scripture that in this, where you think we're wrong, please uh, call the number 281 837 2222 at this time, uh, if you're not a Christian, you can hear the, hear the gospel, believe the gospel, you repent, you confess that Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And then you, uh, after that, you're, you're baptized into His Spirit. You know, even though it's a man doing it, it's, it's the Spirit of Christ that immerses you and gives you the Spirit of Christ. He removes your sin. And uh, after that, you stay faithful to death, and uh, you, get, you prepare yourself for heaven as well. Amen. Uh, Romans 16, 16 says, The churches of Christ salute you.